Welcome to Working in Teams, Leveraging Integration Techniques, Power of HIT Team Dynamics. The objectives for Leveraging Integration Techniques, Power of HIT Team Dynamics are to use problem-solving techniques, mind maps, SWOT analysis, swim lanes, and fishbone diagrams when working in teams. Differentiate between a team task and an individual task. Demonstrate a practical understanding of the dimensions of team formation and management. Mind mapping is the name given to a method or strategy that makes it easier to put thoughts into graphic form or to map your ideas. In short, mind mapping is a sketching or a drawing that takes ideas from the head and puts them into a physical representation. The image on the slide looks like doodling, and maybe, in a way, it is. However, this type of doodling can be quite helpful in representing different aspects of the project to members of the team. The way that information flows, the steps in a process, the interactions between stakeholders are all examples of aspects that can be represented nicely via a mind map. Mind mapping can enhance creative thinking by the team as it puts a conceptual idea into a physical representation that can then be seen and reacted to by the team. It can focus attention on the specific dimensions of the project or the activity. It can focus attention on the specific dimensions of the project or the activity that is at hand, removing ambiguous notes and engendering cross-team understanding. These maps can often fit on a single sheet of paper. As more information is added, it can be easily added to the existing mind map structure. This sure looks like a busy screen. Don't let the detail confuse you. If you need to, enlarge the mind map image so that you can see the detail. Pictured here is an image of a mind map that was created as someone began to plan for the birth of a child. The main concern is positioned in the center and is labeled preparing for baby. Major trunks or large tasks associated with a baby, such as supplies for the hospital bag, things to buy, financial considerations, celebrations to plan, and so on, branch out from the center. Each of these major trunks spread out into smaller and smaller limbs of tasks, finally ending in a sphere or a leaf or a node, depending on your terminology, that is an endpoint. Take for instance the branch that emerges from the bottom called hospital bag. By the time you have traversed the whole hospital bag limb, the abstract hospital bag is clearly delineated. The nodes or the leaves are each a discrete item that need to be obtained or completed. It might be helpful for you to experiment with building a mind map. Consider an action that you need to take from the abstract concept to a final deliverable. Maybe it is grocery shopping, or maybe it is to buy a new computer, or maybe it is to plan for re-engineering a process like medication ordering. Just as illustrated here on the slide, put the major issue or task at the center and label it. Place the subtopics around the center circle and draw lines to them. Continue to branch out from each circle with sub-items and nodes or leaves until you come to completion. The goal is to completely enumerate the task so that you have a visual representation of everything that needs to be done to accomplish the goal. In this mind map, the goal is at the center. Prepare for baby. If you would like to experiment with software that is designed to create mind maps, there are several that can be obtained online, such as FreeMind. If you visit FreeMind, there is a gallery of mind maps that will provide additional examples. Other mind mapping software is available as well, some of it free, some of it is commercial.
If you have looked for other examples of mind maps online, you will undoubtedly note that these maps can become a reflection of personality or style. The preparing for baby was very colorful and busy, and maybe that worked for the person who built it for her own personal use. However, when you are using mind maps for teaming, there are several principles that should be followed. For example, 1. If you are going to create a mind map, you need to focus and to concentrate. If you are using this with a team, it may be best to have individuals create their own maps first and then come together to compare and share. Drawing a mind map with six people can be very difficult. 2. Simplicity is best. Start with the major features and then drill down to the more detailed. Best to start with a simple surface structure and work to add the limbs and leaves as the project or the tasks become clearer. 3. The use of color is helpful as a mechanism for grouping similar things. 4. Leave room for expansion because as the task definitions grow, so does the tree. Have erasers handy. 5. Drawings really do work. As you look at mind maps, you will see that many people use bits of artwork for illustration. Illustrating the linkage of relationships between concepts or branches is beneficial. It helps observers to understand the impact that a change here may make there. 6. Set a goal, but be flexible and willing to adapt as the map begins to flesh out. The benefits of mind maps may be in the eye of the beholder. However, they can help you and your team to think creatively and expansively. Drawing the map forces everyone to think in detail, which makes the mission or the path to the goal clearer. Mind maps, if properly constructed, can illustrate relationships between objects, and they can help you and your team to visualize, with a minimum of text, many aspects of the mission or the project. A SWOT, Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, Threats analysis, is a straightforward yet subjective model that is used to assess the organization's strengths and weaknesses while listing both opportunities and threats that exist for the organization. The tool, while simple in structure and concept, is very valuable. The basic principle of the SWOT is to help the team consider the environment and to parse this consideration into factors that come from the outside of the organization as well as the inside. The strengths and weaknesses are considered internal aspects, while the opportunities and threats are reflections of the external environment. Once a SWOT is completed, the organization, or the team in our case, can begin to create a strategy that guides the direction that a team will take to achieve its mission. In this sense, a SWOT analysis can enhance proactive decision-making and improve planning. A SWOT analysis can also assist the team in organizing questions that take into account both the internal and the external environment. In a SWOT analysis template, each letter, the S, the W, the O, and the T, are placed in one cell of a four-cell grid. Generally, each cell contains a series of questions that have been predetermined to help organize thinking and assessment. Some examples of these questions or aspects that are frequently assessed in a SWOT can be seen on the next slide. Here are some examples of what a SWOT analysis of a healthcare-related project may contain. An assessment of the organizational structure. What is the leadership style? Is it a respected leadership or one under duress? What is the staffing situation? Are the workers happy and motivated or overworked and downtrodden? What is the financing model for the project you are considering? In the case of an HIT project, is the funding coming from inside the organization or is there an incentive or financial benefit coming from the government or a corporate office? Geographic location can also be evaluated in regards to all four aspects. Maybe it is a strength, or it could be a weakness, 
particularly if located in a region that is economically suffering. It could be an opportunity. For example, if a large manufacturing firm is building a new plant that will bring new jobs. A threat could be that a new, very technologically advanced hospital is being built two miles away. The state of technology is another important dimension that is often assessed in a SWOT related to HIT. Is the clinic or the facility up to date in regards to both available technology and workforce IT competency? If they are cutting edge, that would be a strength, if not a weakness. What external opportunities or threats exist that must be acknowledged in this regard? Competition in region, economic shifts, and many other dimensions may enter into the SWOT. They can fall into any or all of the four cells. Many things that look negative can actually have a silver lining. It is not uncommon for an item to be a strength and a weakness, or an opportunity and a threat. There are many dimensions that can be included in a SWOT analysis. In regards to an HIT SWOT, assembling the team, either physically or virtually, and asking for group identification of aspects that can be used to fill in the cells can result in a very robust and diverse assessment of environment. This is another area where a diverse team is beneficial. Some members may be in tune with the external aspects of the analysis, while others may be more in touch with internal strengths and weaknesses. Diversity can be a real asset. Another tool, the swim lane, is very helpful for visualizing complex process diagrams and tracking personnel working on particular parts or subtasks of a project. Swim lanes can be oriented either vertically or horizontally and offer a simple way to track subtopics and team members as they work through each project. Unlike other types of flowcharts, swim lanes visually depict deliverables and dependencies. Standard symbols are used to convey movement within projects. Complex interrelationships throughout the project can be simplified by hyperlinking between activities depicted on various by hyperlinking between activities depicted on different sheets if the swim lane is being constructed and displayed via a computer. Swim lanes are particularly useful in projects where multiple departments and diverse personnel are involved because this type of flowchart can nicely illustrate how delays or mistakes propel downstream, further impacting other teams and their timelines. Fishbone or cause and effect diagrams, also called Ishikawa diagrams, are used to track the impact of variables or actions for efficient production of products and potential product failures. The potential changes, often grouped by major production categories, are arranged to capture factors that could affect production, marketing, and delivery of products. Categories, originally conceptualized when the method was in formation, include equipment or machine process or method, people or manpower, materials, everything in the process, from raw materials to information used in production, the environment, management. Each of the categories are laid out as seen in the diagram on the slide. The goal is to identify areas where quality defects of variation could occur or have occurred, allowing the team to focus on strengthening the weak link or altering design to avoid the defect in the first place.
The fishbone approach came into vogue in the 1940s and has been a staple of Japanese manufacturing. Now that we have investigated some of the problem-solving approaches or tools that can be used by teams, we will move on to the next objective, which is to differentiate between a team task and an individual task. How do you decide if a task is a team or individual responsibility? The answer depends on several factors, including the type of task and whether one individual with the special expertise can make the decision or the decision is made to meet as a group to take advantage of a wider spectrum of knowledge and information. One test for whether you need to assign a task to a group is to think about the problem that needs to be resolved. An issue may be more than a single problem that needs to be debated. It may be a big part of a deliverable or a large amount of input and varied discussion is necessary to come to an end point. If you find yourself thinking that there is a need for everyone to sit down together and discuss something, it is obvious that team tasking is probably necessary. Teams are often composed of many individuals, each of whom carries information and knowledge necessary to complete the project. As has been alluded to earlier, it takes many people to make a village. Therefore, having clinicians, systems engineers, human factors experts, financial folks, administrators, and the like on an HIT team is smart. The team needs to coalesce to solve the issue and arrive at a solid plan. The output of team tasking may create tasks that enable individuals to split up and work for an extended period of time. Many times this is necessary when projects are large and complex, but ultimately the work is still team-based. Therefore, while work can be done in smaller groups or even by individuals, the goal is to come back together to synthesize and merge the work and form a team product. There are occasions when the work may fall to a single individual. For example, a member of the team who possesses very specialized knowledge may be asked to short report and present that material to the team. The takeaway here is that even though it is an individual contribution, the team still acts upon the contribution of the person as a team unit. The final objective of demonstrating a practical understanding of the dimensions of team formation and management is a skill that, by this point material, should be familiar to you. In the activities associated with this unit, you will apply that practical understanding along with some of the techniques that we have offered in dealing with forming and managing a health IT team. The activities specifically focus on health IT scenarios. Your goal is to apply the general concepts to a specific HIT example. This concludes Leveraging Integration Techniques, Power of HIT Team Dynamics. In summary, you learned to use problem-solving techniques, mind maps, SWOT analysis, swim lanes, and fishbone diagrams when working in teams. Differentiate between a team task and an individual task. Demonstrate a practical understanding of the dimensions of team formation and management.